Was that coming? Was that coming? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. We're glad you're here to worship with us today. We just have a few announcements that we need to take care of. I hope that as you came in, you received these pocket quilts, a little green cloth with cross on them. It's our Christmas gift to you. They were made green because green is a good Christmas color but also it works kind of good all year round. And so we wanted to keep those with you. I'll read the note for those who are at home and can't see them. This pocket prayer quilt was made for you to slip in your pocket and throughout the day when your fingers touch it and the cross that's on it, you can be reminded of God's love and grace for you, a tangible symbol of God's peace. Special thanks to Janice Wright for putting those together for us. That was really nice. And if you did not get one, make sure you get one on your way out. Please note the events that are coming in the bulletin and participate is able, especially the Christmas Eve service on the 7th this Friday. We'll gather here and online for drama, communion, individual candles, and more. Script cards, are, it's too late to order special ones, but we still have a lot in stock. So see Linda gordon here if you'd like to get some of those to finish up your Christmas shopping or just use them regular if you'd like. Our annual catch-up offering drive is over, but it's not too late to participate. Just memo your check or envelope catch-up. Today, we wanna to thank Ben for returning to the tech booth one more time. Kathy Novak and Donna Almond and Emma Weingarner are on the instruments. Uh, our candle presenter and lay reader is Charles Kirkpatrick, and he's also in the pageant. You gotta turn me down just a little bit. I'm echoing. Oh, he's got it up here. Never mind, Ben. He's got it up here. And Charles is also, besides fixing monitor overloads and things like that, is also in the pageant that's coming, as is, and we'll be singing a song, and Terry Priest is also in the pageant, directed by Mary Jo Bell, and she's gonna also be singing for us today. Our ushers are Jeff gordon and Jim Mallott, Donna Webb made the coffee, and others brought in food for the coffee hour afterwards. And you know, I know there are many odds and ends, repairs and updates and administration tasks that are dealt with by many of you all season long, all year round, and often they're gone without being named or thanked, but that doesn't mean they're not appreciated very much. We appreciate all the work that you people do behind the scenes. Finally, a good number of you purchased poinsettias that are on the altar and, and on the kneeling rail, and we appreciate you bringing that life and beauty that is added to our sanctuary in memory or in honor of loved ones. Please take time to read the insert on all of those people who are given in honor of and in memory of. And of course, all of you who are here to sing, to praise, to pray, to read, and to worship that are in the sanctuary, and all of our friends who are doing the same with us at home, we appreciate that very much. Today's money verses come from Matthew and James with commentary. Proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the message of Christ and Christmas. Freely you have received every good gift and every perfect gift which is from above. And what gift is more good and perfect than Jesus Christ coming to us at Christmas? And coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, therefore freely give. Please remember if you filled out a prayer slip to hand it directly to the ushers as they now collect the offering. Thank you. Thank you. 
Almighty God, you bless us with so many gifts, including Christ. We have come to meet with you and offer you ourselves, in part signified by the resources that we share, that we may bear good fruit in your world, the fruit of compassion, of self-denial, of sharing, so all will have enough, so that at Christ's coming to us this day, he may find within us hearts that are ready for his habitation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please remain standing for a Christmas affirmation of faith. Throughout the service, you'll be joining us on portions of readings that are in yellow font. We believe in God, the creator of giver and giver of life. Who brought all creation to birth, protecting, nurturing, and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God born among us as a fragile baby. Embodying both love and the need for love and calling us to trust in God as a tiny child does their parents. We believe in the Holy Spirit breathed into us at our birth. Always drawing us on to be born again, nourishing our growth and inspiring our living. We believe in the reconciliation of the world to God through Christ, hunted at birth and humiliated at death. Christ entered our fearful darkness so that we might enter his glorious light and share the life of resurrection. We believe Christmas is a sign of the life to come. A call to live in peace and celebrate living and loving together. Amen. Remain standing, please. Our understanding of what we believe is all centered in the humble infant born in the manger. Let's sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, for his head of and lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift are winging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, Vigil till the morning knew, saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow, Christ the babe was born for you. You may be seated. The babe is born. The next step then is for us to come and to worship him. Let's sing, O come all ye faithful. Oh, come. 
come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. See how the shepherds summon to his cradle, leaving their flocks on night to gaze. We Joyful footsteps, oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord, child for us. shine let your spirit soar open your minds and hearts for love is making its home among us it shines in the darkness and sings in the shadows love is the hope of the saints the call of the prophets and the heart of the church we know what love is because God loved us sending his son to live among us and promising his return a love such as this compels a response. We see our salvation in the child of Bethlehem. Jesus is the lamp in the window, the beacon on a hill, our star in the night sky. He makes us new and fills us with his unfailing love. So let's prepare for the Advent candles today by singing. We lift the light of hope. We're going to do it to a different tune than we've been doing last week. So this week it's going to be to the tune of Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. We lift the light of hope, oh God, your purpose burning bright. In praise we sing the gift you bring our hope complete in Christ. We lift the light of peace, the Lord of truth and right. In your domain let justice ring and bring us peace in Christ. We lift the light of joy, O oh God, your praises are delight. The love, O oh God, your candle in the night. You come to give us a plan with the mighty love of Christ. Okay, I did something wrong with the slides, so don't worry about it. You're not supposed to tell anybody. They don't have the script. <laughs> I know. But they got lost, and so did I. So. Okay. We relight the candle of hope because through Christ, God's indwelling spirit in Christ empowers us to fully appreciate in life and boldly face our future. We relight the candle of peace because in Jesus, the Prince of Peace, God guards our hearts and minds, releasing us to live in harmony. We relight the candle of joy because Christ's Spirit strengthens our soul 
enabling us to choose to offer and light to others not prepared to celebrate. Today, as we remember Mary, the one chosen to bear our Savior, we light the candle of love. Because of her love for God, Mary was faithful to serve as she was called, and through Mary, God would deliver the divine and perfect love of our Redeemer. Ephesians 3, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So Christmas has always been my favorite time of the year, as long as I can remember. And I just love everything about it. Uh, and some of these things may sound strange to you. One of the things I love the most that I haven't been able to do in the last couple of years is I always love going to the mall at least one time and experiencing the crowds, the shopping, the standing in line, the holiday music, the, the line to see Santa Claus, the even longer line to get a cup of Starbucks, <laughs> and sometimes even longer line to go to the restroom. Um, I, and, <laughs> good. Um, but I've enjoyed everything about Christmas. The music, uh, WOMC playing Christmas music for, the, for 30 or 40 or 50 days in a row. I forget what it is. I know to me it's not Christmas unless I've heard Feliz Navidad 45 times. And um, it all building up to the Amazon packages arriving. Uh, and then obviously Christmas Eve showing up here, lighting the candles, putting them out, doing the service, ushering many times with, uh, for over the last 30 years, and eventually ending up with the Christmas Eve and Christmas morning with the grandkids. So, and, and, and my love is that Christmas sh should be everywhere. Uh, I, I picked up this song a couple of weeks ago that I didn't know before, and I'd just like to sing a little bit of it just to conclude. Let it be Christmas. Let it be Christmas everywhere In the hearts of all people Both near and afar Christmas everywhere Feel the love of the season wherever you are On the small country roads lined with green mistletoe Big city streets where a thousand lights glow Let it be Christmas everywhere Let heavenly music fill the air Let every heart sing, let every bell ring The story of hope and joy and peace and let it be Christmas everywhere. Let heavenly music fill the air. Let anger and fear and hate disappear. Let there be love that lasts through the year. And let it be Christmas, Christmas everywhere. Let it be Christmas everywhere. In the songs that we sing, in the gifts that we bring, Christmas everywhere. In what this day means and what we believe, from the sandy white beaches where blue water rolls, snow-covered mountains and valleys below. Let it be Christmas everywhere. Let heavenly music fill the air. Let every heart sing, let every bell ring the story of hope and joy and peace, and let it be Christmas everywhere. Let heavenly music fill the air. Let anger and fear and hate disappear. Let there be love that lasts through the year, and let it be Christmas, Christmas everywhere. Christmas everywhere. Amen. Thank you. So let's pray. Lord, we want Christmas to be everywhere. We want to experience it all around us. But at times in all of our anxiousness to prepare for celebrating you, 
it's easy to get lost and forget about you. When we sense the darkness all around us, remind us that the sun always rises, even if it is behind the clouds. Remind us that your light has come, even though circumstances sometimes make it hard to sense you. Almighty God, visit us again with your salvation. Fill us with joy to sing your praises, for you bring to us your hope, your peace, your love, your joy. And we welcome you into our hearts and among all you people all who are here and are online. You promise us your love again and again, ultimately demonstrating it through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We receive him and your love, confident of your care and mercy for all of our creation, your creation. You shepherd us so that we have everything that we truly need. And so in turn, we pray for the needs of our loved ones, our community, and our world. We pray for those who are traveling during this season, for whatever reason, that they will stay safe and healthy. We pray for those who are under the weather, be it from COVID or flu or any other things that come our way. Specifically, we continue to pray for those affected by the Oxford school shooting, for Iowan Bennett with cancer, for Susie Stevick with COVID, for family and friends who have been lost to COVID, including uh, Tim Tidmore, and also a friend of Jerry Weaver's, Lou Golub, who both passed away, not necessarily from COVID, but have passed away these, this last week. For Terry's friend, Carol, and for others for whom we know no reason, we don't know the reasons, but you do, and for those that are just simply unspoken and have never been spoken, but are still deep needs in the hearts and minds of people. And we lift them all up to you because you do know. And then, Lord, we also pray for the family of Brian Martin, who has a child with COVID now, too. For all of these, Lord, we lift them up. And then finally today, we pray for six-year-old Claire Gordon, who has cancer that is difficult to treat and for whom we now dedicate this quilt. Lord, today we ask a special blessing on this child, Claire Gordon, and on her parents. May your loving arms embrace her with your strength to give her and her parents an endurance through this difficult journey they face. As they use this quilt, may its sight and warmth be a tangible reminder that you want to bring peace to their hearts and calm to their troubled spirits, to know that they are prayed for and cared for. Help them to rest, confident that you are there, always awake, keeping watch, holding her and her parents close, hearing their innermost fears and hopes. May your spirit beat upon her and on them, even in the darkest and loneliest of nights, reminding them that you, our Heavenly Father, holds a special place in his heart for each one and is always with us every moment of every day. We're never alone. We dedicate this quilt for your effective use with Claire and her loved ones as a sign that you are compassionately working in their lives. We ask this thing in the, these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate healer and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together as you're comfortable to stand and we'll sing together, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. Little town of Bethlehem. 
them, how still we see thee lie. How above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark peace shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to all on earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his hand. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Can you be seated? Hopes are fulfilled and fears are relieved for those who humbly accept God's blessing of his son entering their hearts. 700 years before that first Christmas night, the joy and love of God's companionship and care is seen in care in Christ was seen by the prophet Micah. He wrote, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in the nation of Judah, but the Lord will choose one of your people to rule the nation. Someone whose family goes back to ancient times, the Lord the Lord will abandon Israel only until this ruler is born and the rest of his family returns to Israel. Like a shepherd taking care of his sheep, this ruler will lead and care for his people by the power and glorious name of the Lord his God. His people will live securely and the whole earth will know his true greatness because he will bring peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, I don't have that. They don't have that line. <laughs> you have a line, and then that line starts. Okay. Here. Am I reading that? <laughs> you. Yes, see, that's where oh, it starts. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Duh. Can't we, get didn't, good. we didn't do that. You can't didn't get, see that. He, can't get good help anymore. <laughs> And John the Baptist and Jesus teach us how to know his greatness and participate as his people. Read with the pastor the yellow font. <laughs> Everyone will see the saving power of God. Crowds of people came out to be baptized. But John said to them, do something to show that you really have given up your sins. What should we do? Produce good fruit. Be generous to the needy. Be fair. Don't abuse power and be content with what you are given. To sum up these examples, simply treat others as you want them to treat you. This is what the law and the prophets are all about. 
In doing this, we will be loving God with all we are and others as much as we love ourselves. But how can we accomplish this in our lives? John said, I am baptizing with water. I am just baptizing with water. But someone more powerful is going to come. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In many different ways, John preached the good news to the people. Thank you. The Bible is full of heroes. A whole set of them is found in the book of Judges. Remember Samson? Gideon? Deborah? Don't hear about her as much for some reason, but she's there too. Charismatic, powerful leaders who are raised by God to deliver his people from their enemies. Just prior to our text, Micah calls the current king a judge to draw attention to how much the current king was not a judge <laughs> that the nation needed at that time. He was weak, humiliated, and embarrassment. He can't save himself, much less the people. They were surrounded and walled off from potential help or resources to survive thanks to a siege from the Assyrian Empire. It makes us think, who is around us that is hurting, isolated, spiritually hungry, unable to receive help or help themselves? Micah is called to deliver God's message of hope. Doubt and despair will continue only until, well, let's break it down, in the town of Bethlehem Ephrathah, a minor town, not necessarily in size, but in significance. Jerusalem had gotten too big, not necessarily in size, but too big for its britches. Remember that phrase? In its modern, prideful, worldly corruption, Micah couldn't see a good king ever coming from there again. So the roots had to go way back, way back to ancient times and ancient places, to the good old days. The days of Adam and Eve before sin entered the world, when God and humanity were one. And then again over the centuries, but still long, long ago, through their king par excellence, David. And so it was from the town of David and the strong line of David that an idealized king like David would be born. And when he did come, the scattered would return home and those disconnected from God would return to God and this king would lead and care for the people like a great loving shepherd. And it would be so world-changing that Matthew takes this text and deliberately misquotes Micah to say, Bethlehem was by no means the least among Judah. Because Jesus so transformed lives and the world that he put the town on the world map for all time. The name Bethlehem means house of bread. But it also can be translated house of war. Ephrathah means fruitful. But it's sometimes translated barren or worthless. Last week we talked about Elizabeth, who was barren, now fruitful, and Mary, a virgin, now fruitful. And John came out of the wilderness, out of nowhere, really, a son of an old priest and his wife. But out of those humble roots, he brought a message of the heavenly kingdom coming and bearing fruit among us. And Jesus came from the roots of heaven, but also from the roots of a very young, poor virgin and her intended. Born in a stable and grew up in a construction worker's home. And from those humble beginnings, he grew up to usher in God's kingdom and change the world. It's almost like there's a choice to be made, fruitful or barren. Do we nurture or do we divide? Are we living in, in empty wilderness or lush and fruitful lives? People were eager to get in on this new, lush, fruitful world. They flocked out to John to hear his message and wonder how they could join what they assumed would be a massive, majestic movement toward God and fall of Rome. And John said, in essence, this is how you get in on God's act. To bear the fruit of love for God and for others. And we're left with a choice. 
to live like Jerusalem, relying on reputation and the all insufficient powers of our own charisma and determination and policies to change our world by constant revolution and conflict, coercing others to our will and our way, proud, unwilling, self-centered, barren, and our hearts and lives under constant siege. Or to live like Bethlehem, humbly relying on God's reputation to direct our lives with his all-sufficient powers and the charisma, the equipping gifts of the Holy Spirit, and encouraging and inspiring each other, not by destructive criticism, but by our own transformation as an example for others. As someone else summed up John's message to the crowds, to bear the fruit of repentance, to live rightly, live justice, live for mercy, live in generosity, live in community, live as though you belong to one another because you do, live as though you are responsible for one another because you are. Humble, willing, obedient, cooperative, and fruitful. Maybe our theme's story will help us illustrate what I'm talking about. It takes on a science fantasy form, but it still carries a relevant point of truth for us in our world today. Once upon a time, long ago, almost every child had a superpower and attended superpower school to learn how to channel those energies. One day they had all gathered because a nearby world needed the very best of them to fight that world's bad guys. But they couldn't decide which people with which powers were needed to win the day over there. Those with x-ray vision said they could see the bad guys through the walls and they could catch them by surprise and finish them off before they even knew what had happened. Those with super speed said they would still escape, but we can move faster than them and they couldn't get away. Those who could fly said they'd be best qualified to hunt and chase them down. Those with super strength said none of that would do any good unless once you catch them, you have the power to overpower them once they were caught. And so the argument went on with group after group, all proclaiming their own powers as the one that the other world would need. Finally, a super smart kid entered with a rather ordinary looking kid who was small, skinny, and didn't even have a special superhero suit. But the smart kid said, this one will solve all their problems. None of them believed it. What secret power or weapon does he have? We can't even tell by looking at him. The smart kid replied, I don't really know. All I know is he is successful at what he does. The others began to think it was a joke, and they began their arguing all over again. But it wasn't very long before they all stopped arguing and agreed to send him to the neighboring world. This kid had changed them with his secret power. The leaders of the other world who had called for help were surprised when they saw who showed up. What's more, several weeks passed and they didn't see a single bad guy being caught. So they prepared to send him back. News spread that he was leaving on that world, from that world and the crowds thronged to say goodbye. That caught the leader's attention. And so they began to investigate. They called the jails to see what was going on. They found they were almost empty because no crimes were being committed anymore. The world had a league of villains. Their numbers had so declined so badly that they kidnapped the kid to find out what his secret power was that was decimating their ranks. The kid said to them, I have no secret power. I just try to make people feel better. I help out when I can. I share my things. I'm quick to forgive. I always smile. And as he was saying this, he was handing out healthy treats and hugs and telling jokes and treating treating cuts and listening to pains and preparing dinners and helping out however he could. The League of Villains became so relaxed and comfortable around him that they forgot to go out and do the bad things that they were supposed to do. Now they knew his secret superpower. It changed the world without capturing a single bad guy but instead, by making them feel so wonderful about themselves and about life and about their world and others, that they were transformed into good people. They no longer had any desire to be bad and hurt others. Back on the home world, the secret worked so well that the other super kids ended up forgetting about their superpowers in order to use this new secret power, and that's the reason children do not have superpowers today. 
And so the kid carried on, changing the world without capturing a single bad guy. His power was enough to help them feel better, so much so that they stopped wanting to do the bad. The secret worked so well. Why would you need to have superpowers if you had the most superpower, valuable superpower of all? Because with Jesus' help, we all have the power of love that can help brighten anyone's day. Don't be afraid to use it because so many in the world need to experience it. The sermonette title was accidentally left out of the bulletin, but this is what it's called, When Love Comes Home. In our context, it is Christ coming to our world to take up residence. The question is, what kind of home have we prepared for him when he comes? And what strategy have we used to prepare it? Do we even have room for him? Mary Jo's going to come and sing for us. They journeyed far, a weary pair. They sought for shelter from the cold night air. Some place where she could lay her head, where she could give her babe a quiet bed. Was there no room, no corner there? In all the town, a spot someone could share. Was there no soul come to their aid? A stable bear was where the family stayed. Do you have room for the Savior? And do you seek him anew? Have you a place for the one who lived and died for you? Are you as humble as a shepherd boy or as wise as men of old? Okay, we'll sing that part again. Would you have come that night? Would you have sought the light? Do you have room? A star arose, a wondrous light, a sign from God this was the holy night. And yet so few would go to see the babe who came to rescue you and me. This child divine is now a king, the gift of life to all the world he brings. And all mankind he saves from doom, but on that night for him there was no room. Do you have room for the Savior, and do you seek him anew have you a place for the one who lived and died for you are you as humble as a shepherd boy or as wise as men of old would you have come that night would you have sought the light? Do you have room? Will you come 
tonight will you seek the light do you have room When I think about Christmas, I think about my family, especially my mom. She loved the holidays and all the large gatherings we would have. Whatever the seven of us lacked under the tree was made up for with love. For her, that was what it was all about, showing and giving love. Christmas is the perfect time to celebrate the love of God. It moves us to think of others before ourselves. I always think about Mary and her unwavering love for God. She put that love of God above all else, and because of that love, she was chosen to be the mother of Jesus. How amazing and what a tremendous gift she gave to the world, all because of love. Every year as I sit down to write the Christmas pageant, I think, how can I tell the story of Christmas in a new way? The story is the same, right? We all know it. It never changes. Um, over the years, I've written the story through the eyes of Mary, Joseph, the innkeeper, Mary and Joseph's parents, and even Herod. Through their eyes, we've seen their love, joy, and fears of all the things that surrounded the birth of Jesus. This year, I have chosen yet another key player from that night. We are about to hear from a shepherd and his account of what happened that night and how it impacted his life. Imagine being a simple shepherd with no extraordinary status getting a visit from an angel that would forever change his life. We are so fortunate to have Terry and Charles. They never say no to me. I think poor Terry's played an angel like for seven years, so I'm really proud of that. Um, so um, here's a story about when love was born. This has been the most amazing time. I have, I have never been more frightened and awestruck in my whole life. The things that happened that first night must be recorded for all eternity. I am still in awe of what I have witnessed and seen. I am filled with such wonder and peace. When I tell you what has happened, you will be filled with joy, love. You will be just as amazed as I am. I am babbling. My child... Why don't you let me help you tell the story? After all, I am the one who told you in the first place. You will have to excuse him. Apparently, I am his first angel visit. I think I scared him a bit. I wasn't scared. Other shepherds were terrified, but I was just fine. Okay, maybe I was a little. I mean, you caught me off guard. Who expects an angel to appear out of nowhere? I was just watching my flock by the light of the night sky. And then, boom, this one shows up. Scared my flock for sure. And no, I don't want any help. This is my story. You are missing the point here. We can both tell the story. There is so much to tell. Besides, I have information you don't. What information? secret angel information that you don't know anything about. Look, I will tell the things that led up to your involvement, and then you can tell them what happened next. Deal? All right, deal. As long as I get my opportunity, that's fine. I mean, who am I to argue with an angel? Thank you. I was hoping you'd see it this way. You mean your way. Listen, don't make me change my mind. Might I begin now? Do I have a choice? Thank you. This story begins many months ago in a town called Nazareth. There was a young girl named Mary. She was betrothed to a man named Joseph, 
and they were soon to be married. I was sent by God to deliver Mary some incredible news. You see, Mary had found favor with God, and she had been chosen by him to give birth to a son, the Messiah. She was to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Lord Most High. Well, how exactly was that supposed to happen since she was not married? She inquired the same thing. The Lord is capable of all things, and nothing will be impossible with God. I explained to her that by the Holy Spirit and God's power, she would indeed conceive a son. I revealed to her that her cousin Elizabeth, who was well along in years, had also been chosen to give birth to a son, and he was to be named John. Together, their sons would do great things for God. Well, who is Mary anyway? Is she the descendant of someone powerful or a great rabbi? Surely she must be the daughter of someone important to have been chosen. No, Mary is just an ordinary young girl. She is a, of the peasant class and has no great skills or power. I see. But how did Joseph react to this? They were betrothed to each other and, and not yet married. He must have had a lot of disbelief and anger for Mary after she told him the news of her pregnancy. As you can imagine, it did not please him. He had some very important decisions to make. If he publicly divorces, it, if he publicly divorces her, she could be killed. So in order to save her from public disgrace, he decided he would dismiss her quietly. He had thought that perhaps she had not been true to him, but still did not want to cause her harm. Well, that would be a kind thing to do. If he had publicly dismissed her, he could have been in real danger. She would have been mutilated, humiliated, judged, and possibly put to death. What made him change his mind and stay with her? I can only assume you had something to do with that. Yes. I went to see him in a dream. I said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary into your home. This child Mary is carrying was not conceived by another man, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary will bear a son, and he is to be named Jesus. He will come to save the sins of the world. There it is, that scary voice again. <laughs> Don't you think appearing to someone isn't scary enough without that voice? This must mean that this is not a dream. No, you are very much awake. Everything you witnessed is real. Well, that is pleasing to me. I will never forget what happened as long as I live. So if Mary and Joseph are from Nazareth, how did they end up here? Remember, Caesar Augustus sent out a decree that all the world was to be taxed. Because Joseph's lineage is from the house of David, he had to go out to the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to Bethlehem, the city of David, to be registered. <laughs> well, that's quite a long journey. It must have been a hard trip for Mary to make. Yes, it was. Mary and Joseph are true servants of God. Okay, so without giving away the ending here, are you telling me that the only place they could stay is where I found them? As you can imagine, there are many people here for the census, which makes finding a place to stay difficult. I suppose. Still, it seems like someone could have made room for them. Okay, now it's my turn to tell the story. So the other shepherds and I were in the field watching over the flocks. All of a the sudden there was a bright light, and then this one appeared and said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger there's that scary voice again 
and I thought I was going to tell my part. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. All right, anyway, once the angel finished delivering the message, there was suddenly a multitude of angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, goodwill toward men. We could feel the glory of the Lord surrounding us, and we were no longer afraid. Our hearts were filled with love, and we knew we had to see this wondrous event for ourselves. We quickly went into Bethlehem. There was a bright star shining that led us to the place where Jesus lay. We were in awe at the humble beginnings of the Son of God. It was all just as the angel has said. Mary and Joseph were in a stable, and the baby Jesus was lying in a manger wrapped in cloths. We fell to our knees before him, praising God. We went about spreading the good news for all to hear. We told of the birth of Jesus and that we had witnessed to be true. You seem troubled. But maybe you could answer a question for me. Certainly, my child. Why did God choose shepherds to be the one to spread the word and the birth of the Messiah? Surely there were people with more authority than us. Do you think you are unworthy of such a task? I Do you just... question God's intent? Well, I just wonder why God chose us. We're not rich. We're not royalty. Why would he think people would believe what we are telling them? My dear child, don't you see? We are all children of God. We are all the same in his sight. Your class status or wealth mean nothing in the eyes of God. He knows your heart. And he hears your prayers that come through in the night when you are lying awake under the stars. The shepherds were chosen because God knew that you would be honest messengers of this good news. He knew you would listen and rejoice in good news. The message of the Messiah's coming would be believed to be true because it was delivered with pure joy and love. Oh, I see. People were accepting and believing when we delivered their extraordinary news. Well, we are not done yet. We have more people to tell. Go on. What do you mean? Being a messenger for God is not always without risk of danger. Oh, you mean King Harold, Herod? Well, whatever will be, will be. Spreading the word of God is more important to us, and we will face whatever comes our way with gladness. We know that we are protected by God's love. Why don't you tell us all what happened next? Well, as you mentioned, King Herod is very troubled that the new Messiah has come. He called together scholars and clerics and questioned them about where the Christ child was born. They answered him by what the prophet had written and said, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea. He then called upon three wise men. He sent them to Bethlehem to search for the child. They are to report back to what they see. Herod has told them that he wishes to come and worship the Messiah. But that is not the truth, is it? No, it is not. Herod is very much afraid that Jesus, the king of kings, will take over his throne. Well, that's ridiculous. He's just a baby. True. But Herod is still concerned. So the three wise men followed the bright star that was shining over Bethlehem. And when they got there, they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. And they fell down and worshipped him. They presented him with three gifts. They are symbolic of the, to the life of Jesus. Frankincense represents the deity. Gold represents the role Jesus will play as the ultimate king on earth. And myrrh symbolizes the way Jesus will save his people. We had no gifts to bring him. All we had to give is our love, faith, devotion, and gratitude and joy. Those are the exact gifts that Jesus would want. Earthly possessions are just things. Love is worth so much more. So, th so then what? Did the Magi go back and tell Herod that they had found the baby Jesus? No, they did not. 
They each had the same dream of a warning from God about Herod's intention to harm the baby Jesus. They were told not to go back through Jerusalem to seek King Herod. Was that you who warned him? No, but I will warn Joseph of Herod's plans so that he can get his family to safety. Now, that is enough for one night. I can't tell you everything that is going to happen. Jesus has a whole life to live here on earth. You have played an important role in history. Never worry that you are not good enough and always remember how much God loves you. Wow, this is an incredible story to tell. I hope that people will believe in all that we tell them to be true. I want all people to have this feeling that I have after seeing Jesus. I want people to know the complete joy and wonder that this baby has brought to the world. The birth of the king has changed everything. How God must love us all. Starlight shines, the night is still, shepherds watch from a hill. I close my eyes, see the night when love was born. Perfect child. Gently waits a mother bends to kiss God's face. I close my eyes, see the night when love was born. Angels fill the midnight sky. They sing Hallelujah He is Christ Our King Emmanuel of peace love comes down for you and me heaven's gift the holy spark to light the way inside our hearts Bethlehem through your small door came the hope we waited for the world was changed forevermore when love was born i close my eyes see the night when love was born
you to Mary Jo and Terry and Charles is still out of the room, I think, but to him as well. Oh, my microphone is falling apart. My lavalier box is falling off my belt and I can't get it back on. <laughs> but we're almost done, so we're good to go. <laughs> so. so let's stand for our final hymn, which talks about two things that we've been emphasizing this week, this day. One is the humility of the heart and the perfect love that comes to it. as you go this week, be open to humbly receive God's perfect love to be reborn in you again to this to each day and look for the spirit given opportunities to share God's message of love as the shepherds did. did. Give yourself fully to the worthwhile work of the Lord. Be an example of how to longingly, expectantly prepare your heart's home for God's presence, welcoming his coming with the rise of each new day. Amen.